sort of family break that we were given came at a really nice time for us off the back of three great performances um, and they were probably great for, for different reasons and then you know the end of last week we had the opportunity to train twice and that probably was the emphasis for that was probably off the back um, the emphasis on that was on us really um, what we need to do we did a big review of, of all three games and what we've been trying to work on and where we're at um, and take stock of where we're at and then also now you know this week obviously we start looking ahead to Samoa so um, really uh, really excited to get back there was a great atmosphere in the in the camp there always is off the back of that little mini break and um, boys are, are really excited to get going we've got a great plan going forward ahead to Samoa and um, also I think the team's in a lot better place and we've got a really good understanding of where we want to go. And so when you did take stock what was the, what was the, the outcome of that? You sort of quietly but not satisfying? Yeah, like you never are, are you? I think, you know, it's the nature of the beast. Um, we know that, you know, there's we're going to have to beat some very, very good teams in order to win this thing. And, um, you know, we're going to need to keep getting better throughout the tournament. And I think we have done that. I think we started really well against Argentina. Um, and we've built on, on different things regarding our game. And, um, you know, we're in a good place. We're not in a great place in every aspect of our game, you know, even the, the better parts of our game, I think we, you know, we keep on it, we want to keep getting better. So, um, like you say, we're, we're pleased, but we really want to continue to push now. And uh, this weekend, obviously, Samoa, um, you know, you're already into the quarter finals, but you sort of won't concern yourselves with that, you just concern yourself with it. So with the challenge that, that they bring in that physicality, um, Jamie, you know, what's it like to play against a team like that who are so, I mean, we were just talking earlier on about the, you know, Tonga going on, you know, taking on the South Africans and, and just kind of that relentless sort of onslaught that the Pacific Island sides all, you know, they, they love that side of the game, don't they? So I suppose you know what's coming, but so what's it like to, to go up against that? Yeah, they're brutal at times. They've got, I think, you know, you look at the Samoa team sheet, they've got world class players in their team, genuinely world class players. I'm lucky enough to play with one of them at Saracens and Theo McFarland. Um, so we've got a little bit of an insight into him, but um, yeah, look, it's it's tough. It's tough up front. I think you look at this Samoan side; they're a lot, but were they're a lot better drilled now than they have been previously. You know, the coaching staff have obviously done a brilliant job with them, and um, you know, especially in around the set piece, their scrum, their maul, we've seen in the previous pool games has been really, really strong and competitive. So we know it's going to be pretty tough up front. Um, but we also know that you know every good England team is built around a strong set piece, so we're excited about that challenge. But we're also aware that you know they've got some. Uh, it's going to be a really physical, brutal contest at times. I was going to ask about Theo actually. Obviously, someone you know well, and you've, you've sort of seen. You've, you've probably got a better insight in than, than a lot of people. It, the sort of blend of that sort of physicality and, and skill set. Um, where does that sort of leave him ranking in terms of you know, second round? He's he's right up there with the best players in the world, regardless of his position. One of the most natural rugby players I've ever seen. You tell him to do one thing, he goes out and does it, and makes it look easy. Um, and I think that you know the nice thing for me, obviously, it's not that it won't be that nice on Saturday, but you know I've been really proud of the way that the performances that he's been putting in um, because he's coming off the back of a big injury uh, last season. You know he he sort of skyrocketed skyrocketed to success and then. Had a big setback, but he's worked so hard to get back, and I think he's a huge leader in that Samoa team. And you know, on the biggest stage, on a worldwide stage, he's showing everyone what he's about, and um, he's back to his best. And you know, he's a player that we're going to have to make sure we keep a big, a big eye on because he's, like I say, he's world class. And, and Tom, just in terms of the challenge for this weekend, it's a message just that you know, if you, I'm sure no one will, but if you were to lose focus, it's kind of exactly the kind of game where you could come and set because of the. Against. I think any game in the World Cup, if you're not focused on what's in front of you, then you become unstuck. Um, so our focus is massively on them. And like Jamie's alluded to, how how physical we need to be, um, how brutal they could be, but how we need to get our house in order. And just in terms of the way they've progressed, like Jamie's touched upon, and I'm sure they've done exactly that in their set piece as well. So how do you appraise? I suppose that's going first and foremost for Samoa, probably a, a bigger weapon for them than it might have been in, in the past. Yeah, I'd say that for most Pacific nations, the set piece has hugely improved. Um, so there's definitely a, a challenge there for us, um, but we'll go about doing what we need to do. Hi, Jamie. Um, just one more on Theo. Do you remember when you first saw him training and thought, this is your 
Yeah, I just I actually remember when I first found out they had signed a Samoan basketball player. Um, so I didn't think too much of it really, to be honest. But um, honestly, from the second I saw him saw him play, it was like in, in training. Um, I think everyone sees these really crazy skills and his natural ability, but he's he's a tough player. Like he's a tough player who works incredibly hard. He's so diligent and professional, and that's one thing that stuck out from the very beginning. Um, you know, a lot of the times new signings with a huge amount of talent can probably just rely on their talent. But he came in and just wanted to soak up all the incredible experience we're lucky enough to have at Saris, and you know he's kicked on, and it's no surprise to me that he's kicked on to be one of the best. Can I just ask you another one about just kind of the process maybe of the next few weeks? Like you know, whatever happens against Samoa, you're playing a quarter final, and then it's sort of there's no tomorrow. Isn't there? Like, what, how did you guys process that in 2019 to go through those? Yeah. Yeah, I think firstly, it, you know, we're in a really lucky position to have been in this position previously. Um, the one thing that we learned was that Tom alluded to it. We can't get ahead of ourselves. You know, this week that we've had without a game has allowed us time to refresh. It's allowed us time to reflect, um, and you know that that's been a great opportunity for us because it allows us to throw everything into Samoa um, and I think one thing that's impressed me about this team is that we take each we've taken each week as it comes I think you know you look at the tournament as a whole pre-Argentina you know there was a lot of doubts around this team and we really just focused on ourselves focused on you know knowing our opposition inside out but then trying to make the most out trying to become the best team we possibly can and that's been our focus and that was what we did in 2019 it's going to be the same again this time Everything's going to be about putting the best performance we possibly can against Samoa, and then whatever comes after that, we're going to make the most of that week too. You're usually quite dialed into what fans are thinking and all that, but have you got a sense that people are getting more optimistic at home? And have you had any break? I don't know any contact with guys back home that are saying, "I'm really now believing we can do it after a bit of a tricky one." Or... Uh, I hope so. Um, I don't. I haven't been reading too much, try not to in tournaments like this, but um, yeah, you know, chatting to my mates, a lot of my mates are rugby pigs, so um, <laughs> they absolutely love it. Um, and you know, there is, a, there is a, you know, a really optimistic feel around, around those guys. There's an optimistic feel in this team, um, but not necessarily looking too far ahead. It's about where we can go as a team, where we can grow. Um, and there's a huge amount of growth in the team. I think you look at you know, we've got some really experienced guys, but also a lot of young young guys who bring a huge amount of energy. And um, yeah, I think you know we're we're hugely optimistic as a team. We know that we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us, but at the same time, you know we want to make sure that we bring the England fans on a on a journey with us. And we've said that from the very start. And we love that we've been able to put some smiles on smiles on faces over the last few weeks. And hopefully, we can continue to do that in a few weeks' time. After that, you know there could be some big smiles. Well, just just to confirm, still. Clean bill of health, everyone available for the weekend? Yep, everyone's in training. Um, and we were speaking to Corny before about the selfless attitude of the team, and he highlighted Dan Cole and the amount of work he has. Does he have a particular target, or can he sort of get any sort of insight into what, what he does that makes him so selfless? Uh, I think um, his target is to hit more than he hit the week before. Um, but his, for him, it's he knows what his role is in the team. I mean, that goes for every player in terms of understanding is where can you add um, value to the team? What is your role? Um, a try gets scored, brilliant. It might be your name on the score sheet, but it's the same amount of points whoever scores it. Uh, and he understands that what his role is. Uh, and Jamie, am I right in thinking that Saracens when Paul Gustav was there, he used to have a sort of award for like defensive player or selfish player of the week? Is there anything like that? Uh, there's no real awards, but what the coaches do brilliantly is is highlight what they value in in this team and and what they value in terms of when they watch games back and watch training back. And it, like Tom said, you know, there's someone on the end of a try, but it's the people that do the hard work in the middle that create the space is is the thing that they focus on. And you know, the the person without the ball makes the play. So. Um, this team is hugely revolved around effort and physicality, and you know it's pretty it's pretty clear when we step out and we pull on an England shirt, what's required of us, and um, 
So I don't think we need too many awards. Steve's not the type of award kind of guy. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it, it gets highlighted, it gets credited, and when it's not right, it also you know we're pulled up on that too, and um, that's that's the way it needs to be. I think Alex Ferguson once said the the most powerful words in management are well done. Is if you use them sparingly, is, is that what sort of Steve's style is as well? Uh, no, he's. I mean, he's. He's just. Um, Steve says how it is. When it's good, it's good. When it's not good, he tells you. Um, he's very honest and um, he's very approachable in that respect. So, you know, he's he's one of the one of the best coaches that I've worked with, and the way that he gets that balance right is is why he's one of the best. Uh, and this one final one. Have you been sort of keeping up with what's happened in Australia and? almost certainly going home and do you feel any sympathy for Eddie Jones and obviously having been in similar experience in 2015? Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Um, having been there in 2015, it's, it's a really tough position to be in. I know the impact that it can have on, you know, your own mental health, but also your family and the people back home and the, and the negative cycle that, that can come around with that. And we saw that. Um, you know, a good friend of mine, Will Skelton's captain of that team, and he, you know, this World Cup hasn't gone the way that that he's wanted, and that's been, you know, my heart goes out to him because, you know, he's a really good guy, and I want the best for him. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, and um, you know, I'm sure they'll learn a huge amount from this experience. England have never toured tomorrow. Would you like to tour tomorrow? Do you think the bigger, the more established nations have responsibility to tour parts of the world? Uh, yeah, I, I think um, what World Cups do is is highlight the incredible work that the sort of tier two nations are doing and the standard. You know, look at some of the performances from from the the lower seeded sides. Um, you know, the opportunity to go over there. Why not? You know, if you can pair it up with a, a tour to New Zealand or Australia or whatever it might be, I think you know it'd be great to grow the game the game out there and. You know, we know how passionate people are about rugby over there. So, you know, if the calendar works, then absolutely, why not? The last week you spent here uh, in this town, how was it and how uh, do you feel this trip? Oh, it's, it's been amazing. Um, the town's a lovely place. Um, I think the, the people here being so welcoming, um, so caring of us being here. Um, I've enjoyed the ice cream on the high street. Well, I did only find it yesterday. Sure, maybe not. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been it's been an unbelievable stay for us. Thanks so much.